evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another evening of Collegiate Dota. I hope you missed playoff coverage as much as we did uh, over the last week because we've had some scheduling issues, but we are back on track in the round of 16 throwdown between these two teams from different countries. On one side, we've got Waterloo from Canada with a record of 10-4 and four, and a uh, big win over Arizona State, which a lot of people did not expect. Their opponent from the States is going to be Purdue University. They come into the day at 9-4 and four, and a win also over a West Coast opponent in the USC in previous rounds. Another juggernaut so far in this tournament. We'll just have to see how they match up tonight as we have a good BO3 coming towards you. Our sponsors are brought to you by Twitch. A big thanks to them for sponsoring the CSL and featuring our matches weekly. We're proud to be affiliated with the largest gaming stream provider in the world. Asus, Republic of Gamers is the presenting sponsor of the CSL this year. Asus makes some of the world's best gaming PCs, laptops, monitors aces is funding this season's travel to dreamhack and our prize pool for the entire year be sure to follow their social medias at aces underscore rog and thank them for sponsoring the csl last but not least and i'll touch it very briefly we'll talk about it more if there's a pause is that we are giving away some really awesome stuff a gaming laptop and two top level monitors over on the cstarleague.com website they're aces products they're gonna be a lot of fun Basically, what you need to do is submit a college Dota related video for your chance to win some of those items. So check them out. That said, it is going to be a fun night. I'm going to be bringing you the action, joined by my co caster and my partner in crime, Gorgon the Wonder Cow. Hey, it's my pleasure to be here and uh, partnering in crime. You know, <laughs> we, are, we are at the uh the approach to the grand finale here at c star league and i'm really excited it, this is like a two teams enter and yeah. both teams leave but only one team leaves with a chance at that scholarship so it's mm -hmm. you know it's not a death match but it's pretty close absolutely no it's going to be a good game and like we said ro16 that means next round is eight and if you advance so basically if these teams if one of these teams can win this and the next one they go to DreamHack. So these guys are two matches away from securing an all-expense-paid trip to a LAN championship funded by Aces Republic of Gamers for a chance to win scholarship funds uh, for their college. So this is a pretty big match. Both of these teams, I think a lot of folks didn't think would make it this far. Uh, they came through some big juggernauts on their way here, but their performance absolutely shows why they deserve to be in the position that they are. So that said, let's talk a little bit about the draft so far. Ur Spirit, one of the most popular banned heroes of recent days, is actually picked up first on the side of Waterloo. And it looks like Purdue put a higher rate or a higher uh, ban rate on maybe the Invoker, which I sort of understand with his popularity right now, and the Beastmaster. What do you think about choosing to ban those two over the Ur Spirit? You know, it'll come down to whether or not University of Waterloo have a respectable Earth Spirit player. You can't really give that hero to a team that knows how to run it. That's basically what it comes down to right now at, at all levels of play, but especially where you have discrepancies in levels of play between players. I mm -hmm. will say that all the way through the first bands and first picks, this is like pure, unfiltered, unmitigated just like get you high metagame there's absolutely nothing <laughs> out of the ordinary it's not cut with any baking powder or anything gotcha. you can shoot that stuff straight up i mean spent earth spirit lion ventral spirit that is exactly what i would ex like if i were to just spitball a draft for tonight that's very close to what i would have come up with uh, by the way for those of you who don't know gorgon the wonder cow uh, his drug is actually analyzing the meta like it's not a joke this is what he spends all of his time doing. You can find him I, writing I for a lot of websites. Yeah. Yeah. No, I literally get the syringe and then uh, go to town. You should see him when a patch comes out. I can't shake him for three <laughs> days. All right. So that said, it is fairly meta as we expect it. Sven, very popular right now. A lot of teams couldn't find an answer to him. Uh, is Shanghai. I, how, how, I didn't get to watch a ton of Dota Pit, uh, partly on principle, partly on uh, just timing. <laughs> What did yeah. you did you see the Sven really sort of dominating Dota Pit's meta the way that it did at Shanghai? It, it's just <laughs> he's kind of a perpetual pick, so it's not like you're guaranteed to see a Sven mm. every game or something like that. But he does very well. He is picked up a fair amount. He's banned even more, I believe, at Dota Pit. Off the top of my head, I, I don't have the numbers out in front of me. Um, but as I recall, he's banned about twice as more as he was picked. Um, I'll check that to make sure it's right. But he's, he's super reliable. He fits the meta really well. He's 
gets aggressive in lane, he has a stun, a reliable stun, which means that one of your supports doesn't necessarily need a reliable stun, which right. you can grab somebody like an Earth Spirit. Um, and he pushes really well, right? So he fits all of the mold of what is really popular right now in terms of team dynamics. Makes sense. Okay. So he, uh, I, I'm curious to see what the Dota Pit response is that you get. But like I said, he has been popular. And a lot of folks, when you listen to the analysts back at Shanghai and sort of going into Dota Pit, a lot of people said Damn, teams second. haven't yet quite found the answer for Sven in these lineups. Has that changed? Is there an answer for him? And if do you have an opinion on what that could possibly be? Um, I mean, I, other than slow him down and don't let him farm. Right. right? It's, it's a kiting game, right? A, a traditional counter to Sven would be Shadow Demon. Right. That's like, that used to be the counter to Sven. Not only can you uh, slow him down, you can purge him through BKB. You can do lots of damage over time. Mm. You can help your allies dodge the hammer, or you can hold him still and try to wait out some of Warcry. But Shadow Demon's just not that strong of a hero right now, right. partially because there isn't as much laning burst damage to go with the soul catcher and partially because there aren't that many unreliable aoe stuns that are being drafted for tri lanes also partially because tri lanes aren't as effective as they used to be because of the, the mid meta game um, all of those things kind of go together on top of he was never considered that strong of a hero at, at highly competitive levels so but he has all the components that you'd want yeah, to, to deal with this spend so uh, okay. Vengeful Spirit, another good hero dealing with this Fen. The swap yeah, is good for good. kiting. You've got the stun. Um, Lion also with double uh, disables, fairly decent at it. Faceless Void is all right himself. So I think PU Gaming do have a decent set of responses to Sven. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's move on to the Faceless Void here. Now, here's a hero that... Can, I, can I make a quick correction on myself? I just sure. looked it up. Sven was picked and banned about identically as much. Okay. I'm so not sure where I got that. I didn't figure there'd be a big in meta change. the 20s percents for both. Usually, one week of travel time doesn't provide the impetus for a big meta change. Um, in fact, it was funny. I, I, I listened to an interview with Zai a week ago, and everybody knows Zai from Secret back in the day, and he said that he was very disappointed with Shanghai because... The meta didn't feel experimental or groundbreaking. It just seemed like everyone was doing the same thing and just being okay with that. So I'm curious to see how that modifies as we move towards Manila. Faceless Void is something I'm curious about. When the patch first came out and the changes happened to Faceless Void, where you kind of had to get a Blink Dagger to make them effective, and a lot of people didn't think he had the damage output to really utilize the Chronosphere early on, they said he's broken. He's not a great hero. And then I think it was Waga came out with a build for him and said, you guys are, are high. This is a phenomenal hero. And I've seen him played a heck of a lot more since then. Do you think that he fits into the current meta? Like, where does he fit in sort of the standard right now? Would you Can call you... him a tier one hero? Would you call him sort of a situational pick? For Void specifically yeah. or Void in this meta? I, I would say that he is a situational pick. He was really popular in the Americas mm -hmm. in the lead up to Shanghai, uh, especially through those like WePlay qualifiers. He's an okay offlaner, but he doesn't handle stuns very well, stuns and disables. And you don't necessarily want to put him in a farming position. Mm. So he can provide quite a bit, but he can also just really fall flat on his face. Right. Um, Shadow Shaman is a, a pretty good hero to deal with him. <laughs> fat on his non-existent right. hole of a head thing. Yeah, no, I, I mean, there are a lot of good stuns from University of Waterloo, and I would be concerned if I were running an offlane faceless void that he might get caught out. He'll have to be very careful. And he does not have jungle catch-up potential. Absolutely. Even if you give him an Iron Town, he can't knock down stacks. Keep in mind, Wind Rangers, uh, her ultimate does have range outside of the Void Chronosphere. So if she's not caught, he can do a lot of damage. She can do a lot of damage from the outside. Uh, Morphling picked up by Purdue. And like we said, Wind Ranger on the opposite side. Wind Ranger has had a massive resurgence, I feel like, in sort of the mid lane of late. Uh, a very interesting hero, and honestly, Gorgon, it feels like she's even she's stronger in some ways at this play level uh, than we see at oh, the pro way scene. Stronger. Way stronger at this play level than at the pro scene. At the pro scene, she's a persona non grata, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, she got picked, I, I think, like twice at Dota Pit. Mm -hmm. I can remember two games, two games at most. Right. Um, and then she's barely banned. She has a negative overall impact in professional games. But at this level of play, she still has that fantastic ability to grab an axe, grab mm -hmm. a blink dagger, and just appear and kill people. Right. And you don't have as much coordination and teamwork at this level of play to respond to that. Absolutely. Now, keep in mind, guys, that we are in the round of 16. So when we say level of play, we speak about this as college players. These aren't professional. They don't spend their entire day playing. 
A lot of them uh, enjoy it and play a lot, but these are not 7K players across the board who compete uh, on a regular basis. That said, these are some of the best collegiate players in the country, or I guess in, in the two countries that participate in the CSL. So I do look forward to Purdue having answers for that sort of up here and kill. Uh, a TA pick to go into the Wind Ranger. Uh, I'm curious about that. What do you think about that TA pick up on the end? Um, I think that's fine. Okay. I, I mean, Wind Ranger later on will be an issue for ta but in lane she's not and it looks like the death prop it will yeah. probably end up going mid anyway they they don't other than if wind ranger blows an ultimate for ta they've got absolutely no way to knock down refraction right or if ta happens to like walk into serpent wards maybe but other than that um like the refraction is going to peel off a ton of the damage coming mm. from magnetize um and and restrict the amount of those pulses that actually hit her they, they have no non-ult damage over time, I guess is what I'm saying. Absolutely. So I think she's a good pick. Okay. Well, that said, guys, let's get into the introductions. I know I read a big Reddit thread about how, uh, you know, people don't think that the introductions, some love them, some don't get them anymore. But you know what? I'm old-fashioned. I love it. Let's do it, boys and girls. This is round of 16 play. Winner takes all. Best of three between Purdue University and Waterloo. For the dire side on Waterloo, smoked up. We are going to have... Gurudu playing the Wind Ranger, Burnham playing the Death Prophet. We're gonna have Shakti, Young Lean playing the Earth Spirit, the real Hobo. We're trying to make a home for himself on Sven, and last but not least, Banquin the Penguin. We're playing the Shadow Shaman. All right, looks like they may be clashing. Yeah, here. so we're gonna On hold off. Bench. Real Hobo does come around, gets oh, the no. stun, kills someone, doesn't have any backup right now, and that'll be a very fast first blood. Tweak and G just say this is not the fight for us, and move on. Yeah, I'm not sure why she walked down there, mm -hmm. right? She saw them walk around the corner, and it looked like she tried to uh, hide in this little grove. But if you can see them, they can see you, <laughs> right? Yeah. At this stage in the game, it's daytime. There's no nighttime vision antics going on. I well, don't know. That seemed a little questionable. An interesting and start, but that opens us some time to meet the Radiant. All right, for the Radiant side, we've got Han sneaking around on that Templar Assassin going to be sloshing around and that is g tweak has given us the finger with the lion kill somebody will be swapping it out on vengeful spirit and game of tilt is going to be the tachyon mastered faceless void all right those are the lineups as they break down this again is a big game for both of these teams looking to advance to dreamhack dreamhack the grand final for csl and the lion's share of the prize pool the scholarships will be available coming up this May in Austin. So if you haven't gotten your tickets to head out there, if you live in the area, definitely get them. Come down to DreamHack and check out some CSL. Up on top, they've got Game of Tilt with a big grab. Lots of fight. He's going to get away. Down in the middle where the fight's also breaking down. Earth Spirit came in, just barely got out of that one. And uh, I would say very lucky by the TA here that Lion happened to be hanging around. I... I suspect that lion was hanging around with the intention of stopping that level one uh earth spirit rotation it's super common and they should also be generally aware that he's rotating top game of tilt pretty they're far gonna come in the shackle stunned. is there game of tilt comes with the roll base the stun but yeah. jumps away so no harm no foul game of tilt playing very carefully it, i guess that maybe that's their choice here on the off lane is they saw the earth spirit they knew that the rotations were going to be happening and they figured faces void good escape potential really negate some of those rotations yeah, he's got decent escape potential at level 1 when there aren't going to be chain stuns, but if there is mana in this lane at level 3, we're talking a stun, a silence, both coming out of the uh, Earth Sphere, and then another set of three stuns coming from the laning partners. Mm -hmm. And Void can't walk away from that w with Time Walk if they if they correctly and, and uh, adequately just kind of chain those together. The, the Earth Spirit is just rotating a little bit too early. The TA is not as gankable as an Outworld Devourer or an Invoker. Two very in-meta heroes right now that are super level dependent and are sort of the opponents that have led to Earth Spirit being so successful as this level one ganker. Screw is going to be going down here on the bottom, playing that off-lane Wind Ranger, picking up a wind run and two into power shot for harass and last hit. Does have to be careful, though, because there's a lot of stuns here as well. Let's go to the top, where Bangwin came down to harass Game of Tilt, who put a good amount of damage on that Shadow Shaman. He's going to back away, but Shaman's only got a Fairy Fire, so he's uh, going to have to sit low for just a little while here. 
Yeah, there is level two on the Earth Spirit. If he rolls in, he could potentially push back. Oh, but he will miss the roll. There's not the stun coming out of Benguin. I suspect that was a miscommunication. Yeah. Uh, you know, had they got him the shackles off and the roll landed there, then a push back, mm -hmm. Faceless Void would have had the option to either time walk off the damage back into the two heroes mm -hmm. or not time walk and get stunned by Sven. Uh, I'm not sure it would have been a guaranteed kill, but it certainly would have been a lot of harass damage. Yeah. Ooh, Han getting low. The drain comes out from Burdum. Pinged here. Says, I need a little bit of help. And it looks like actually kill someone pinged up there along with Tweak and said, all right, we're going to come around and try to put a stop to the harassment coming out from this DP. Because we're having a pretty good start. She's 16-3 and three against the 9-0 and of the TA. So it's a good time for rotation. So says Young Lean as he also wants to come in. He's going to rotate around on the high ground. So we might actually have a bigger throwdown than anybody expects here in the middle position. Han going to be pushing forward just a little bit. Here comes the roll. Moves on to Han. Han taking damage. Burdum going to come in. Stun from Lions. Not going to catch though. And Burdum backs off. He gets hit with the stun from the Venge. Han's got to back away. This will come to a bit of a standoff. Or what do you call it? An impasse. As neither team comes away with a kill. But both teams ultimately rescue the person who had their life on the line. Yeah, meanwhile, Wind Ranger's doing a, a very good job of harassing the Morphling now that Morphling's been left alone, which is important. Oh, oh. So yeah, it, they that's... didn't even need the Earth Spirit. Basically, what happened is we saw Void come forward, seeing Earth Spirit try to gank in mid. Thought he'd be okay. Benguin and Sven timed their stuns about as perfectly as they could and made sure that he went down. So a nice pick by them, and that will definitely hurt Purdue in this early game as it becomes to an 0 and 2. Sven's at 23 at right now on the CS. Shadow Shaman hits level 3, mm -hmm. and but right as soon as the time that I said, oh, around level 3, that faceless void's got to be careful, bam, he's dead. Yeah. Right? And that's going to happen over and over again as long as there's mana in this. Uh, there is a mango on the Sven, so they could do it again if they get just a little bit of Whittle Harass down onto the void first. Alright, let's see. Han's under attack. Stone's going to miss again. Young Lean does manage to hit, though. Han in some trouble. Yep, he's going to go down. That makes it 3-0. and And things getting a little bit crazy here for the guys on the side of Purdue. I am going to talk to Twitch chat real quick. Some folks are saying that the stream is laggy. If that is the case, then try to just refresh the stream as the Twitch upload's been having a little bit of trouble recently. It makes you feel any better. I'm watching the stream, and it's not lagging for me. You guys just need to am, be watching the game and on stream. I am also watching the stream, and it's not lagging for me. Well, there you go. It's it's you. It's not us. Gold, gold leads at 2,000. XP <laughs> is at 1-1. One and one. Uh, 33 and 7 looking pretty good for the real hobo as uh, for a man named after someone with very little money He sure seems to be putting together some serious stacks here in the top late his his opponent on the bottom G not getting nearly as much as he'd like at 27 and 19 He's definitely gotten more denies, but at the end of the day screw screw a do screw a do Scrub a dub dub those denies don't mean flub. It's just a weird way to spell I think it's what you mean uh I think that's what you mean. You say scrub it uh, up, Dove. Those nice nice. Don't mean flop. Okay, yeah. here comes a boulder roll. Moves on. Kill someone. Kill someone's going to get hit by the stun. Screwdo comes in with the power shot. Stun back on Young Lean. Nice dodge by Screw there. He does get hit on the back by Tweak, but here comes Burdum. Maybe they moved a little bit too early on the gank. There's the suck. Maybe they didn't. Kill someone is going to die somehow oh. as Burdum comes in and makes that happen. I just realized you're trying to say Scarido. Yes. You're trying to say Scarido. Scarido. Yeah. I, be, I, I think that we should call him scrub it up dub personally. Screw it, dude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, man. Uh, yeah, Waterloo's starting to peel away with this. Uh, yeah. G not getting the farm that he needs, largely because he's been left alone most of his lane. He was doing pretty well when he had one laning partner. He didn't even need both of his supports, but he needs one. Mm -hmm. Windranger is, is a really strong laner. Now, I don't think the Morphling is in danger of dying right. down here because he does have strength morph. But he is in danger of being zoned out pretty heavily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's 11-2 and two on her offlane, so doing pretty well. Though I will worth noting that, yes, he has died, but Game of Tilt is at 20-1 and one on that offlane. So getting a little bit more farm than I expected him to get, honestly, up here against this Fen shadow shaman combo. Uh, meanwhile, let's look at the smoke happening in the mid as Young Lean and Benguin wrap around. They're going to see the the wave push forward. Han's going to come out to try and get some farm. Here comes Burnham. Puts up the sock. Maybe get away from this one. Nope, the stun is there. Benguin's got the shackle. 
nowhere for Han to go, but back to base. I get it, that's not the way he wanted to go. Meanwhile, up on the you know, top, Game of Tilt's got the Chronosphere, moves on real hobo, kill someone's got the stun to follow up. Well coordinated, they go one, two, three on the stuns, and real yeah. hobo goes down. I will say, I made a very serious draft theory or error earlier this game, which is not something that, that I feel like happens to me a ton. I totally neglected the fact that Spirit Siphon strips away TA's, uh, yeah. TA's refraction just because I, I was thinking about the old school witchcraft old school, for man. some reason. You know? I did that when I played one the other night. I died in the first two minutes in mid because I completely brain farted about the change. So uh, I, I, it happens to the best of us, implying, of course, that I am the best of the two of us. Now that, that makes uh, that makes me feel a lot better because that... if you're the best, then I can make as many mistakes as I want. Both the teams made a big rotation. Waterloo actually burned a smoke to get the kill on Han. Up on top, they TP to get that kill on Sven. So Purdue coming out ahead in terms of the get, but they might be in some trouble now. Game of Tilt's gonna follow the follow-up stun. Now they've locked him in place, and for every action, there's an equal and opposite gank. And the top lane proves just that. Burnham in the middle, getting attacked here by Han and Tweak. Tweak's used to stun. Out comes the suck. It is very strong right now. The guys have realized just how strong. And Han and Tweak have to run for the hills. It looked like Hill someone wanted to live up to his namesake there. He threw yeah. out the negative armor. He did. I think he threw it out a bit too late. Had he, They moved yeah. before he was ready. Had the armor reduction been on, uh, I think before that fight started, they may have gotten that kill. There's also, there's no levels of meld now for right. TA. Um, so we can't stack up that negative armor quite as much. Which, you know, it, it is what it is. I'm not sure that a max refraction build is the best uh, into Spirit Siphon because Spirit Siphon is like, I, I want to say 12 instances of damage, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, it is enough to strip away, if not all of your refraction, even at max level, most of them. All right, so we're going to push in on the mid tower. The awards are down from the Shadow Shaman, signaling that the beginning of the mid game is upon us. Let's take a look at the net worth chart here as the push continues. Yeah. In jumps, game of tilt. Nice chronosphere. Big kill on Burnham. Turns back around, gets Bangwin, and now they'll chase after Young Lean. Decide it's not worth the trouble. Let's farm up some free gold off of these wards. And really good reactions by Purdue to get them something that they desperately needed. They were having a hard time finding Waterloo to give them openings, right? They couldn't seem to get them out of position. Waterloo was playing very carefully, and they utilized that push to make sure that they got the kills they needed and denied the tower. So really a strong play by Purdue University. Yeah, Purdue's doing a really good job of not letting this uh, early game disadvantage get them down or, or impact their positioning and yeah. decision making. They're not tilting, I guess, is the simple way of saying what I'm trying to get out. G still needs a lot more than he's getting, but he he is getting, right? They have He hasn't been killed. He hasn't been completely zoned out. The Wind Ranger is also doing okay, but honestly, Wind Ranger is getting levels, but not that much farm. Right. Yeah, that's true. I won't disagree with that. I mean, I got it. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I could. Uh, I do think that she's doing relatively well for some of the harass that existed on this lane. Um, we'll see where that goes. Sven, by far the king of the farm right now. Doing a really good job up on the top of securing things for himself as well as pushing into this tower. It looks like they are going to be concerned with trying to get those tier ones down and finished with by about the 17 minute mark and uh, sort of negating, buying Sven as much time as he wants to just go into the jungle and farm until he's comfortable coming back out. Now, do you see Sven spend a lot of time farming nowadays or does he tend to stick with the lane push and roll with the group? It's like a classic Sven typically is a rotation between those two goals. Mm -hmm. He'll stay in the lane and push out and farm, maybe split push if his team is really good at creating space and then hit the jungle until he gets his next item and then come back up to the lane for the tier twos hit the jungle until he gets his uh, third set of items and then come out for the high ground. Oh, man. Typically. Not always, but All it's right, a general pitter-patter. We've got eyes on. They want to try to do something with Death Prophet here. The swap is not available, but the long-range stun is. Armor reduction, harassment, everything but the kitchen sink. And uh, the guys from Waterloo say, all right, if you want to push us off the mid, we'll go to the top. Pop those wards the second they're down. I'll tell you what, so far, Shadow Shaman is getting a maximized uptime here. 
on these wards, and they will utilize that to clear the creeps and burn down another tower. So nice progression by Waterloo, staying focused on the objectives, getting what they want, and just like that, like you said, Real Hobo, with that Mask of the Dominator, will move right in and begin to farm. He's also going to be stacking here down the bottom. So this Sven has a lot of potential to get out of control. We talked about how do you counter a Sven, kiting and not letting him get the farm, and they definitely haven't solved problem B. Yeah, they, they do have the potential to solve problem A mm -hmm. to some degree, but if he gets a BKB, they, they lose that too. Uh, until he has a BKB, right? They've got a lot of stuns. They've got swap and they've got psionic traps. So Sven should have some trouble actualizing in this fight. Ooh, Wind Ranger got picked off bottom. I missed that as there was a nice rotation by Tweak G and kill someone to get a pick on the Wind Ranger. Definitely helpful, but not their number one priority at the moment. Uh, that will give G some much needed time to get himself a few more last hits here. He is about a thousand gold behind Sven in terms of farm. Meanwhile, in the mid, Burdum had invisibility, comes in on Han from behind. There's the roll by Young Lean. Nowhere is safe, saith Waterloo, as they come forward, use the invis rune, and Young Lean just traveling about the map as if he's got frequent flyer miles. All right, and th there is going to be some push here down bottom. I don't know if they're going to answer this. Response. Uh, Wind Ranger thinks there's going to be a response. Here we go. TP1, TP2 coming out. The shackle is there, but G does have the strength morph going. Even though he is silenced, he's being pulled back. He's going to try. And no. the roll in, the stun, and he should be going down. Not oh, much. no! Tweak. Oh, Tweak came back to try and help with the save. You know what it was? He saw four heroes lined up in that tiny little grotto here and thought, okay, maybe I can Earth Spike that was long my enough. Chance. It's, it is, it is my moment, he It thought, is my moment. He died. If I Earth Spike, perhaps he can waveform the Chasm. I will be a hero and immortalized in Purdue history, and that is not to be. Well, he is uh, now neither a hero nor... In fact, he showed his mortality very quickly there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the trouble with Lion, right? If you if you make a mistake, you pay with your life every single yeah. time. Gold leads at 4,000 for Waterloo, by the way. XP is as well. Not a big surprise there as Waterloo has been making the pace in this match. Only one of those towers went to them. So when we talk about the 4,000 gold lead, it's not as tower dependent as it would normally be when it's two versus none. Uh, that said, Purdue still so far from being out of this game at the moment. Oh, yeah. No, Purdue is still in fine shape. They are certainly behind. They're at a disadvantage. They do have this stack boarded up with a psionic trap. I'm curious to see if they collapse on it and try to get a kill here. Uh, They're going to back off. But, uh, but the creep is going to die <laughs> from that weird little pull that the Earth Spirit just did. Earth Spirit is going to rotate into the mid. He is seen by psionic trap. And that psionic trap is now not long for this world. One gold going the way of Death Prophet. Game changing <laughs> stuff, obviously. You never know. All right, listen. If they win by by that item that just barely got them there, that buyback by one gold, then we'll remember this forever. I don't think I've definitely happen. lost games because I didn't have buyback by one gold. I've never won a game because I had exact amount for buyback, though. That's true. Okay, well, yeah. but I guess if you didn't lose it, and then you had a chance yeah. to come back and win. All right, G gets Whoa. stunned. Nice move by Young Lee. Goes to the follow up. Verdum's going to come in. G in some trouble. The silence comes out. Ups the suck, and he's gonna go down. Man, they, I'll tell you what, Waterloo is playing well, but the thing that I'm most impressed with from them at this point is they have absolutely maximized stun and lockdown time. They are casting, they're not casting until the last possible second. They're taking risks because you've got waveform. You've got the ability for the faceless void to jump out. Like, there's a temptation to overlap the back end of stuns, but they're barely doing it. I think it's really impressive. Yeah, they, they are certainly playing the edges, as we like to say. They're working in those margins. Now mm -hmm. Roshan is going to be prize. They did drop both the, the Exorcism and the Serpent Wards for that, though. I'm not sure that they can convert into a Tier 2. Yeah, I, I think at that stage, not a terrible idea. I think that that was a chance if Purdue had come in, landed a big Chronosphere on them. They needed to have at least four heroes there to get that Roche down. Um, they would have been in some serious trouble. So fast kill, worth the cooldowns, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I, the cooldown will be back 
here right. relatively soon. There is still a tier one for them to knock down as well. Gee, you're gonna get hit by what a kick. And the boulder. Young Lee knows he can't get a kill, but he just wants to harass, and G is forced backwards. That was a really beautiful uh stone remnant. That was that was long distance hard to target. Yeah man, Young Lee kicking like Bruce Lee over here. Word. All right, top and bottom exchange one for one. The second the TPs come out, you start to see him run. Screwdo doesn't shackle oh, right no. away. What? What? Ha what? 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 I don't even know what. I'm just confused about what I just what? saw. What? They're still going though. All right, so Young Lean Young is now Lean. in some trouble. He's getting caught from behind. He is going to go down here. Does manage to get out magnetized, doing a lot of damage to Han. Han on the run, very low. Bang with the right click, and he finish it? No. Han's going to be able to heal himself with the bottle and get out. They lost two for the price of none. What the hell just happened? I'm still confused what this what this Faceless Void was doing, to be honest. Um, the rest of the fight was a blur. Like, there were some disables and well, some I just, deaths. I, I but... saw him catch the what? Wind Ranger, and then I saw him time yeah. walk out of the Chronosphere. He, he just ran. He didn't time walk. He just okay. He has that, that That's right. Super speed. But it was like he but said, the, he, you guys can handle this. I'm going to go fight them over there. But there was nobody, like, really over there. He just ran outside of his Chronosphere, cast time dilation. I don't think he had anybody that wasn't in the Chronosphere, and then ran back in. And, but you it know was, what? They got two kills what? out of it. They got two kills. Yeah, it worked. And you know what? Um, they're trying to throw us off our game. That, I think they uh, suspect some stream sniping. And they uh, say, well, if the casters don't know what's going on, then Waterloo can't know what's well, going on. Well, it's funny because you see the chronosphere go up and you just automatically assume, okay, Void will stay in the chronosphere. Yeah. I can look at another we'll portion of the fight. <laughs> so he starts running. I just, I, that was, that was, that was entertaining. Oh, All right. Uh oh, here we go. Speaking of entertaining, Screwdo gets caught on the uphill, kills someone left behind, and his opponents take his name literally. But the chase is on. Burnham wants to keep going. He's going to scare the hell out of Purdue as they fall back to their tower at a high rate of speed. Down one, ready to push. Ultimate is available oh. on Burnham. As are the wards from Bangwin. This will be a tower. Yeah, it should be. There is the Atrophy Aura, and there is also a uh, Desolator now up on the TA. So, well, if they try to see high ground here, this could go badly for Waterloo. They are going to try uh, at least chip it. Here we go. They're going to move up on the chip. The ulti comes out from Burdum, who stays on the low ground. Game of Tilt has a Chronosphere. He's waiting for the right opportunity to put it out there. Here it comes. There's the Chronosphere chance. He gets two. Uh, Bagwin walked into it. That makes it three. Burdum goes down. Big power shot from the outside. Game of Tilt, very low. Real Hobo trying to put in as much work as he can, but he's stunned. The kite game has begun. Big jump by G comes forward to go for Screwadoo. Real Hobo standing. One of the last. He's going to probably drop down. The Desolator finishes him off, but he's got an Aegis. They'll wait around. Ha! Nice job killing the trap, but it's not going to matter. Big Shackle gets Hobo out. He turns back. It's a triple stun. And Screwadoo comes in to try and finish him off. Real Hobo moves back around. He's got to be careful. The Desolator putting a lot of work onto Wind Ranger, and they'll back away too deep. I thought... I thought they might be in a little bit of trouble there when he turned back, but it worked out, I guess, as they only lost... I, I mean, they lost three, so there's... they. It didn't work out, no matter how you cut it, right? Uh, you can I say the turnaround didn't hurt them, right. but it didn't do anything. They didn't get a kill out of it or anything. But that double shackle was super clutch, though. That would have been a dead oh, spin yeah. without that double shackle. Yeah, yeah. The Wind Ranger turning around and getting that shackle was yeah, crucial. That was and huge. the Sven, 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 if the Sven turning was around. Thinking. If he hadn't managed to get three heroes with his Storm Hammer, I think that that yeah. turnaround would have been the death of him. You know what? Sometimes you just got to be greedy. Let the avarice flow, Toppies. You know what? That's, I mean, that, that, <laughs> that, and we can throw anything, I think, has been the motto of CSL teams this season. Uh, this is kind of a close game. I mean, towers are well in favor. Mm -hmm. of the dire side but they're only 3000 ish net worth in the lead yep. they're not even in the lead by the amount that they you would expect them to be dictated by the tower that they're up right. really and all of that uh, really resides on sven uh ta's done a great job of staying relevant in this game and finding farm in the face of some really difficult early positions uh, Hobo's going to go ahead and farm his opponent's jungle here, so he's going to try and slow down their gold accrue. And he's pinged out by the TA. They say, I got a trap there. We know that he's around. Um, Han really making the most out of his traps to keep sort of safety around him at all times. Now, Scarwido Scar is, Scar Scar is going to pop his wind run and get out of what I thought was going to be a sticky situation for him. He's lucky Venge wasn't in position. Yeah, he uh, scrub-a-dub-dubs himself right out of that situation. Gets nice and clean of it. 
I don't know why. You know what? It's just scrub a dub dub. I dig it. All right. It's time for it. Sanjin Yasha picked up on the Sven with the Blink Dagger. Windranger almost done with that Acceptor for Waterloo. And that's going to be some trouble, I think, for the guys on Purdue once that does come up. Uh, DP looking pretty well. Earth Spirit's got the Aether Lens and not a ton. We got Blink Dagger on Faceless Void, which has proven pretty effective. Uh, so far in this game, Blink Dagger on the Lion and then the Desolator Blink on the TA. So lots of mobility. You can definitely see that Purdue is building for that. How do we sort of kite this Fen? How do we get the initiation on him before he can get it on us? And uh, we'll see if that strategy holds up. What's not going to hold up here is potentially this tower. As it looks like they want to keep coming forward. They do have wards. I'm not sure why Bangwood's not just throwing the wards down, letting it finish off the tower. Yeah, there's... They're just trying not to get caught out yeah. of place. I right respect now, basically. that. They're going to smoke, and they're going to try to presumably wrap around and find somebody. There's nobody to find, but they don't know that. Right. Oh, if they just if sit they just wait, wait on this room, break. they might might actually. Sco they're going to ping it. They know that oh, Skiridu the picked, smoke. Up, picked up the... Uh, no. no. Oh, Ooh. wow. The counter smoke gets lifted by the invisible Wind oh. Ranger, so wasted on radio and now dire knows where their are and are going all right there's Earth the spirit slow there's the shackle that catches the tree pod's gonna be on the run tweet comes in in comes game of tilt he does have a chronosphere if the silence wears off down come the wars on the outside range swap to game of tilt for the save but the shackle is there he is going to get out somehow earth spirit is not he will go down we see Game of Tilt on the run. Burdum making the chase. Meanwhile, Bangwing going head-to-head -head with Han. The pick up the throw down. Game of Tilt will die. It's a one-for-one, one, but a one-for-one one that absolutely favors Waterloo. Now they're going to keep going. We see G jump to the high ground. The, shackle, the power shot's going to miss. Venge will go down. Real Hobo gets knocked backwards. He's losing a lot of life and has to get out. And Burdum will back off as well. But it's not over. His Game of Tilt has come back. And he is putting in some work. Gets a double kill for his trouble. And Purdue on the war pass. Yeah, that did cost two buybacks for Purdue, but they are going to farm out a good chunk of these wards. They're probably going to get a tier one mid. Even even with the buyback, the the swing still favored them by almost 1,800. Yeah, but it did take away from the faceless void, so that is something to, to bear in mind. It did favor the team, but not the void. Mm. Uh, but the TA is really the hero that you need to keep in check right now anyway, right? If, if you're water, that's the hero that you're worried about. Mm -hmm. And honestly... The TA, the only thing she has to, to be concerned with is the massive number of stuns. Right. So if she gets a BKB, which I assume is going to be after Manta, she, she's basically all set. Two weeks going to blink forward, looking for a stun. It's not going to be there. Game of Tilt wants to play, goes in and starts putting some damage on the tower. Lots of harass coming out. Burdum's going to lead in, gets turned into a frog right away. Big shackle on Tweak, tries to get a latch. It's not going to happen. Which is back with the power shot. Kill someone's going to take the stun. He will be sacrificed to the altar of the dire as they close in and work him down. Going to go into the trees to buy some time. That'll make some space for the escape of the Radiant. They do not come away with the tower, but they sacrifice the Vengeful Spirit. All right. It's something. That was uh, yeah. a Vengeful Spirit die after buyback. Which, honestly, in this situation, is okay. Right. Because it was a team fight anyway. And now, the next time she dies, she doesn't have that buyback counter. Uh, holding her dead extra long so you know it's nice to get that that buyback mm -hmm. counter addition sometime when you don't need to defend your high ground because you have that extra 25 seconds added on when you also need to defend your high ground it makes it that much harder all right ta will send an illusion scouts out the roach is being done roach dropping ah! very fast with the wards inside of there she, illusion got pushed to the high ground oh. <laughs> that's what i was laughing at all right second aegis of the game going on to the Sven once again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think Waterloo are aware that they are kind of uh, running against the clock right now. They right. are in the lead in terms of map control, narrowly in terms of net worth, but Verdum it's going to have three, three TPs come out. Reactions. Two are going to land on top of the cross here, but the cross here is going to disappear before it comes out. Big grab by Burnham on Han. Han is in trouble. Gets caught with the shackle. Goes in Viz, but will go down anyway. So a nice kill there as they get a pick off. And, uh, did Han blink into the uh, Chronosphere, or did the Chronosphere land on top of him? Because if that Chronosphere was put up on top of him, it just no, cost it Purdue. Wasn't. He blinked into okay. it. Okay. Okay. Well, in that case, 100% an error by that guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He should when, not have blinked into If I remember correctly, was it was uh, here was the Chrono. He came in from this direction, popped up here, and then things just went badly. 
Yeah, he does not buy back, and there's 35 seconds till he's up. He is the bulk of the damage and control for his team right now. There's a Lincolns on Morphling. Here comes Most the big of push. the stuff that he deals with is AoE. Burnham puts up the ulti. So is Skirtu. They're going to start putting some serious work here on the middle tower. Want to take it down. Move to the melee racks. They know TA's not here. This could cost them dearly. Will cost them dearly. Melee racks drops. They go for range, and we should see them back, I presume, after this. And they will do just that. Immediate blink by Sven. And off of a slight error, a three-unit error by the TA, they lose a tower and a racks. Yeah, that's a pretty game of good margins, explanation. Man. Game of margins. Uh, you know, the, maybe you can shed a little bit of that blame onto the the void for not placing the opponent far enough toward the edge of the chronosphere. But even so, getting stuck in that chronosphere, wh whoever's fault it was, right. doesn't really matter at this point. It definitely cost them a rack. Right. I mean, if you're using a Blink Dagger, the impetus is to Blink in the right spot. Oh. Possibly get caught by the stun, but the high ground is packed with greed. Down the road they come. Waterloo now on the run. Bagman puts down the wards so that P Purdue can farm up a little bit extra gold. Burn's going to come in, puts up the suck on Tilt, wants to start harassing him. Tilt's going to go backwards, kill someone, sticks around for a few more last hits, and it was a good pick. All it grossed, though, was a Shadow Shaman, but you could argue having lost the ultimate also very beneficial or making it a lot more of a worthwhile trade. Those wards have been utilized very, very well against Purdue so far to make sure that they can maintain complete lane control and continue to push. So yeah, Purdue doing a good job of keeping their heads in the game. 7,500 gold, by the way, for Waterloo to the lead. XP is a lot smaller at only 2,500. And Dyer is now leading in top two for the net worth, though. That uh, TA has got a never-say-die attitude. Has been working her butt off. Yasha on hand. Morphling has the Lincoln Sphere now. Uh, so, like you said, there is a bit of a clock on Waterloo's back. Though Sven has been picking up his game. He's got that BKB at 10 seconds for the next fight. All right, and... I will also say that the Morphling, if he does not want to hold on to buyback, has enough for an Eagle hold mm. uh, or whatever he wants. He's got 3,500. Uh, it's a tough decision, but he's not doing anything even with two lives right, right. now. I, I think probably the right call is to buy something. And he did. It looks like he bought an Eagle Horn, I'm guessing. Yep, okay. it is an Eagle Horn. He's going straight into the, uh, straight into the shotgun. I think that's the right call in this game so far, especially if they're trying to keep the aggression on their side. And they will do so as they roll five right down the top lane, looking to take out that tier two tower. We do see a congregation of the rest of the teams. Radiant starting to close in. Looks like they want to make something happen. The tower is going to go down. G has to jump to safety. Just barely gets out before the real Hobo Blink comes to bear. Hobo's going to go ahead and pop that speed and armor. Out comes Burdum's ultimate. They're putting up some serious damage. Screwadu putting it out as well. And they can't seem to stop it. That will be a dead tower. From the back, though, nice Blink. Chrono is going to engage. Hobo fights Tweak. Han gets a lock up on Bangwin. Kills someone in some trouble by Hobo. Hobo turns on G. Meanwhile, Han dropping to the rest of the team. Dyer takes three buyback from the TA. They want to try to stop this Rax from going down. G and Game of Tilt coming back in. They don't have a Chrono this time around. Real Hobo gets the double stun. Nice adaptive strike, but the follow-up is there. G dropping. Lincoln Sphere is going to get popped. Now we see the wards go down and try and finish the job, and that will push everyone back here on the side of Waterloo. Waterloo's got to be very careful. In fact, we see the Aegis come out. Sven went in very deep, trying to get himself a follow-up kill, but he's just going to lose the Aegis and back away. Tower and Rax, that puts it on the double. That is a very tall order for Purdue to come back from when they are facing one set of racks versus all tier two still standing. But it's not over. Game of Tilt wants to go. G comes in. Nice shackle by Bangwin to buy a little bit of time. Hobo putting up some serious damage. Game of Tilt a little too far forward. One more click will do it. He goes down. The double stun from Lion, but will it be enough? The buyback is available on Game of Tilt. G getting low. G jumps. Han gets caught inside of the shackle. Nice adaptive strike to buy a little bit of space. Burnham wants to move forward. He gets stunned as well. Finger coming in from the far side. That was the ultimate Lincoln Sphere pop for G right there. Block the Sven stun. Comes around. Gets himself the Shadow Shaman. Nice adaptive strike backwards. Hobo is locked up. And it's a triple. A double kill for Han. The one person you did not want to see walk away with that double. Manages to get his hands on it. Yeah, I, I would have really loved to see TA go for uh, BKB and Asha, which I assume is going to be building in Manta, as I said earlier. Mm -hmm. um, they probably wouldn't have lost that Rax if he hadn't been held still until he died. Yeah. There's too much stun and disable coming out of water. Really. BKB would get rid of all of that, but live and learn and then get Rax, it looks like, is the story of the game here for Purdue, at least on that account.
I will say a nice re-engagement coming out of Purdue, keeping themselves in the game, at least for now. They don't have a ton of wave clear, though, so you got to wonder how long can they keep themselves in this game. And that is the real question. Purdue obviously making that distinction right now. Is it time to consider uh, where we are in this? You don't want to get yourself in these games to the point where you're frustrated. But on the other hand, when this is a best of three winner take all advance to uh, the round of eight for DreamHack, one game away for traveling to Austin, Texas, every inch matters and you got to learn. I, I feel like Purdue maybe is at that point right now where they're pulling the PPD, where they're sort of making a book on their opponents, seeing if maybe they can come back in the next one. Let's see what happens. Han's going to get caught with the suck. He's out very, very far. A huge shackle from Screwadoo. Not really sure. Did they think they were roaching maybe, and that's why he was so far forward? I think he was just jungling. I, I wasn't actually watching him, but my suspicion was that he was just out there. I mean, he's got nothing to lose. Mm. That probably wasn't the right place to be, but his, his team is all, all but out of this game at, at this point, uh, un unless there's just tremendous throws. Um, coming from Waterloo. I, I just don't see a way out of it. There's no wave clear for Purdue. You know? It's, like you said, they, they seem to be making more of a more of a principled stand, trying to get the playbook filled out, rather than actually Big Chronosphere by game, but he's going to be hit on the backside. Nice separation for the rest of the team, but Tweak is going to get melted by Hobo. Meanwhile, on the outside, the Shackle is going to go on game a tilt, and that should be the game. No buybacks. Four down. Last man standing is G, and it's going to be a t -t 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 team white, baby, as they push into the bottom. The GG comes out from Purdue, and Waterloo, our Canadian brethren from up north, Stomp about and show just why they are in the round of 16. Don't go anywhere, boys and girls. This is game one of a best of three. We've got presumably, possibly two more for you tonight, but at least one coming your way to decide who advances to a dream hack. My name's Tops. You can find me at Toffee's TV. I'm joined by my co-caster, Gorgon the Wonder Cow. You can find him at the Wonder Cow over on uh, Twitter. And of course, last but not least, check out C Star League to get all of your updates on what's going on both here and in other games like League, Hearthstone, StarCraft, and many, many more. Don't go anywhere. We'll play some music for you in between matches and get ready for round two of Purdue versus Waterloo. <laughs> 